You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 13th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we've been social distancing since the 90s. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Happy Friday the thirteenth, Blue Gal. Hey, happy Friday the thirteenth. Hey. We love we love all of you. Yes. And uh virtual hugs to everyone. Yes. I know that these are tough times. We're living through some hellish times these days. We are. And uh you said something to me today, Drift Glass, that really hit my heart when you said, Let's just all be good to one another as much as we can. Well. And then you had a caveat. I did. I did. <laughs> Except Except for the assholes. <laughs> go ahead and bag on the assholes. Just go right ahead. Go right to, ahead. I said to Drift Glass, Drift Glass, you know, you can be an asshole on I, social media. I know. I, I am. Uh, but I, I, this, this, is a, this is a stance I choose to take. When I see <laughs> when I see injustice in the world, Blue Gal. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, when, yeah. when someone is just being, I really, at having done this for a really long time, both of us having done this for, for podcasts for 10 years, blogging for 15, debating about politics since we were, you know, kids, mm-hmm. um, and really kind of understanding how politics works and having been to this rodeo many, many, many times. I I don't know about you, but I'm going to give myself credit for being able to spot the sincere person with whom I have a principal disagreement. Right. And the asshole who just wants to throw acid in everyone's face. They sometimes use the same words, but they're very different in their intentions. I have an example for you, Nick Searcy. I know he blocked yes. you on Twitter, but boy, is he being a uh, colossal asshole on oh, he Twitter is. today. And, and it breaks my heart because he was on um, Justified. Oh, yeah, very, Justified. He's very good. He's very good on Justified. You know, if he could just just be that guy. But um, on he's other with Patton Oswalt. And I'm like, and I believe Patton Oswalt was once asked about him and said, well, you know, we don't talk politics. In, in person, he's very sweet. I'm sure he well, is. Well, on Twitter, he's not he's very a monster. sweet. He's he a wants everyone. Monster. He believes that Democrats are going to kill everybody. Right, right. And, and he is, this is the thing. It, this is going on a lot yeah. in right wing media. Is that the left wants to kill you? Mm-hmm. And what else do they have? I know, I know. I mean, that and, is the sad part. This yep. is this is sort of the meta commentary that that infuses much many of our podcasts, many of our 537 episodes of of this fine podcast, which is. Please remember the only way you're allowed to be wrong on the right is you're not conservative enough. Uh Uh-huh. You're Uh never – I mean unless you sort of get kicked out of the party or you you have a violent puking reaction like a Bruce Bartlett and say, I can't. I can't anymore. I just can't. And you completely reverse yourself. That's a – those are the rare, rare one-off events. On the whole, the one of the things that holds the conservative movement together and the Republican Party together is you're never allowed – to be wrong about anything or admit you're wrong other than um, what about Barack Obama was worse and um, I wasn't conservative enough. I it didn't, I didn't hate liberals enough. We didn't own them hard enough that you you know, you're, you were too nice. Basically you weren't a big enough asshole. And because let's face it, as we've said a million times and we'll update it for the present circumstances, the average Republican would rather lick the bedpans in a coronavirus isolation ward that admit that they were wrong. They certainly are willing to totally erase their past and rebrand themselves oh. as anything rather than admit they're wrong. And never. we've seen that. So never. So, and, and so yeah. there's this article in, in the uh, Atlantic today that's been going around called The Trump Presidency is Over by Peter Weiner. Mm-hmm. And, and the question <clears throat> has been asked by many people. Why the hell does Peter Weiner have a column in the Atlantic, and why is he talking on this particular subject? Peter Weiner was Carl Rove's fucking deputy. Yeah. Okay, this was he was one of the staunchest, most uh, obnoxious defenders of the Iraq War. He got behind massive cuts for Social Security. Uh, he's a right wing evangelical asshole, and he 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 was he was W's as I recall steady hand. He was a steady hand on the tiller. 
this guy. So why? If, if you erase the byline on this article, mm -hmm. there's nothing in it that I disagree with. Oh, there's a, there's a great deal I disagree with, but oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, and, he, does, and, he doesn't, but he, but his huge omission of forgetting right. strategic forgettery yes. that the reason we have Trump yes. is, is that we allowed Are the Tea Party like... to rebrand the Republican Party. Well, yep. and here we go. And why does this guy? Why does this particular douchebag have a column in the Atlantic? Jeffrey Goldberg is the editor in chief of the Atlantic magazine. Yeah. David Frum is the Atlantic uh, senior editor, going back to March of 2014. So the masthead tells you everything the, you need to know. There continues yeah. to be a coalition of yeah. Bush regime dead enders that have a stranglehold on the editorial pages of America's right. major news outlets. And so. This asshole gets gets to have a feature article and gets to have it run up the flagpole and and gets to talk about how isn't it sad isn't it sad how Donald Trump has is is a disaster as a president. Well, Donald, let, but I I want to I want to take this one level deeper, drift class. Sure, take it take me which deeper, is, baby. Wow, wow, chicky. Which now, is while maintaining a three foot distance. Let's be very clear. <laughs> the reason we have Trump isn't yeah. just because we forgot the Bush administration. No, it's because. The Republican establishment thought it would be perfectly okay if Jeb was the nominee. Right. Right. Or, or and, Rubio. Yeah. Or, well, but Jeb especially was the front runner at the very beginning in 2015. Sure. Remember that? I do. And the reason he was the front runner was he was a Bush. And the he, they forgot that the Republican base had already sacrificed a great deal of their own personal history yeah. to forget about bush that and to the, forget all the mistakes they'd made voting for a bush that was the deal the deal was, that was the deal we'll right. put on stupid hats and call ourselves a tea party and you will never ever ever mention the name bush ever again and then we'll then you nominate someone else and then we'll be cool yeah. with that we, we, we don't ever you know get rid of the policies we never stop being republican assholes in our soul but we'll rebrand ourselves, you know, three days a week if we have right. to. And just you, to... they broke the rule. They right. broke the the pact that they had was the Tea Party forget. will get you off the hook. Right. And then, I mean, it it is within memory that mm -hmm. this this was the problem they had in 2012 with, uh, you know, Romney's going to win in a landslide. The, the Overton window was so short mm -hmm. between... Romney's going to win in a landslide and Romney losing that you the brain cells would actually recall, oh, wait, Gross. they just told us Romney was going to win three days ago. Gross. They lied to us, and, right? And that sets off this horrible cascade memory. Like, and who was right. the asshole? Oh, my God, it was Karl Rove. Where do I know that name? Oh, my God, George Bush. And yeah. so it's like I, I, I've agreed. I, I put all of that. I put all of the shitty, awful, racist, liberal baiting fuck you, you cut and run surrender monkey uh, mm -hmm. rhetoric that, mm -hmm. that I was thrilled to, to just strut around the street di displaying during the Bush administration. We packed all that away and we sealed in the big drum and we bear it in the ocean. We agreed never to talk about it again. And here you are with a can opener, opening that thing up, making me remember that I used to support George Bush and I stood by right. him and, and Carl Rove was my boy. How? Stop doing that. Stop right. kicking me in that one spot where we all agreed you wouldn't kick me anymore. And, and and our point is, as it always is, that the rebranding of the Republican Party after Trump is coming. Yes. And we, <laughs> Tom Cotton went to New Hampshire this week, Drift Glass. Yeah, Cotton goes to New Hampshire. <laughs> not, not Cotton comes to Harlem. No, no. Cotton goes to New Hampshire. And, but and just to finish up with this article. It, yeah, yeah. Th th this sort of makes my point, which is if the Bush administration were truly repudiated, David Brooks wouldn't have a job. Brett Stevens right, wouldn't have right, a job. True, Michael Gerson true. wouldn't have a fucking job. Peter Absolutely. Weider would have been run of a goddamn country. Max Boot would have been would have been in hiding somewhere in Venezuela. Uh, Jeffrey Goldberg would shut his hole forever. David Frum would go back to fucking Canada. All these people would have vanished because no, they would have been so radioactive by their by their intimate relations, by their close um, spit swapping relation with with Cheney and Bush and all the unmentionables. But everywhere you look, I mean, it's fucking Joe Scarborough still has his goddamn show on television. They keep cranking but it, but is it that out. Why, is that why Bush and Cheney disappeared after their administration? I think they... So, they, that, so that their policies and their party could survive this? I think they were, they were basically told, um, and because they're both politicians, 
Right. And there, there they were within a hair's breadth of opening their holes and getting, you know, besides, Cheney wants his horrible, horrible daughter to be president. Exactly. He wants so, her to be in leadership and so forth. What's the price yeah. of that? Well, the, and plus, Cheney was busy having his heart swapped out three, you know, three, every three Oh, months. I know. I know. So he was yeah. a little busy. But the whole, the whole predicate for, for, for pretending, for everyone agreeing that the Bush administration never happened is violated every time you open up a newspaper and see, oh, that guy was a fucking Bush speechwriter. And right. he's writing about how horrible Trump is and how it's a complete surprise. Let's and, investigate and the, that. Isn't it the media's job to know the the history and background of the people that they're listening oh, to? Oh, they, they – the, <laughs> no, it's, it's their job to hire people who are in the club. Right. And, and right. David Frum and, Dan, right. and Jeffrey Goldberg – and Bill fucking Crystal and his stupid son-in-law and Peter Weiner are all in the club. So is the Trump presidency over? No. In fact, there's a, there, there's a, a, a non-trivial chance that Trump will be reelected because by October, Donald Trump will be a hero for having personally slain the COVID virus. And it will all have been Barack Obama's fault, according to Fox News, Rush Limbaugh, Hate Radio, um, uh, Hugh Hewitt. And half of the editorial pages in this country are going to be talking about his bold leadership style and, and how he did this and how he did that, because all they ever fucking do is lie about the thing they did yesterday. That's yeah. the only thing that keeps them together. Can pl- continue lying about us. Because remember, you can never admit you were wrong. Peter Winter right. can never stand up and say, I am personally responsible for how fucked up this country is. And and well, that, or even how fucked up my party is. I mean, well, that alone would be such a huge admission. They won't admit that. And and there's a few that do. And those mm-hmm. few have my respect. Stuart Stevens. Yeah. The title of his yeah. upcoming book is called It Was All a Lie. Yeah. And and yeah. he's like, dude, I, I ran campaigns for 30 years. I was the best of everybody. And I'm telling you, it's all a lie. Liberals were right about everything. So, yeah. but you can never ask that question because the minute you do, the minute you entertain the theory that maybe, just maybe, the person sitting at that desk shouldn't be there, then you have to ask the question well, well, are there a group of people out there who were right about everything and told us this was coming? And maybe we should hire those people to sit in those chairs. Then it gets really scary. Because, What's your prediction about how many people are going to have Stuart Stevens on their TV shows to talk about it? Um, a is it going to be like Ornstein and Mann, or yeah, is it going to be few. better than that? No, it'll be a few. It'll be a few. They'll, they'll, now that there's podcasts, hey, Stuart Stevens, come on our podcast. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that would be great. Hey, also, so, probably Lawrence O'Donnell will have him on. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell can come on our podcast, yeah. too. That's okay. Oh, yeah, Lauren, that on. would be fun. We'd love to have Lawrence O'Donnell. You'll have twice the bitter Irish on the show. <laughs> and, and who doesn't love that? Um, hey, speaking of, let's 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 pivot from bitter for just a one minute. One thing, one more yeah. Irish person to add to the list: Soledad O'Brien. We should oh, add yeah. Soledad yeah. O'Brien. You should come on our show. Really, I'm serious. Really, uh, really, should. come on our show. And, we and love la- you, and you should come on our show. And yeah. Melissa Harris Perry has resurfaced to ask the, the musical question: Why does Chuck Todd exist? Melissa yes, Harris right. Perry. If if any of our listeners know anybody who knows anybody who knows anybody, we would love to have her on our podcast. We, yep, sincerely. and she can vent to her heart's yeah. extent. However she wants to, we would love to do that. Yes. Uh, Drift Glass, just stopping for a moment, again, virtually hugging everyone. Yes. Um, and and letting people know there are things you can do yeah. over the next couple of weeks while you're social distancing. Mm-hmm. In addition to catching up with episodes of the Professional F Podcast. Yeah. Uh, I gave blood this week. If you, you want did. to talk about a sterilized environment where yeah. everything is super, super clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is... And and it's kind of hard to social distance when someone's poking a wire into your vein. But uh, I'm uh, B negative, rare blood type, and they need it. And they call me every 53 days. Please, please, please come in. Mm-hmm. So I do. Uh, it's a way to make a difference. I highly recommend it. Uh, and um, postcards to voters is something yes. you can do at home. You can. You can. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, then you have the internet and you can... Uh, connect hook up with postcards to voters and do that that is a really great thing to do most most campaigns now have the ability to phone bank remotely so yeah yeah here's a that list too. here's a cell yep. phone go forth my son if you're trusted if you're if you're like that guy who lied um then don't be that guy but <laughs> don't most be that guy most uh campaigns that have, that have any legs on the ground at all feet on the ground at all yeah um, especially have, if you're trying to flip a seat in the house yeah. like we are yes uh, that's a good thing to do. Uh, and then um, 
get your taxes done early. Yes. Go ahead and yeah. do that. Uh, you know, there, there are things to do. I am also uh, very proud uh, of a group of high school students who received a $10 donation from me last summer mm-hmm. for Donors Choose. And with that, and of course, uh, it was matched by the Bill and Melinda Gates yeah. Foundation. So, you know, me and Bill and Melinda, we're yeah. all working together to all make together schools on this better. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this was one for our local high school where my kids go. Yeah. And yeah. I was able to help them purchase uh, materials for the AP World History Test. Yes. That the, that the school did not have and did not have the funding for. Mm-hmm. And uh, looking at the pictures of those kids, when I look at pictures of kids that I help on Donors Choose, first of all, usually I'm choosing students that are on the autism spectrum. Yes. I you you can Almost actually on Donors Choose you can. Uh, do searches for the for the kind of students you want to help, the kind of school you want to help, if you want to help locally, if you want to help uh, special needs kids, or you want to help kids who need uh, toothbrushes and washcloths. You know, you mm-hmm. can go that direction as well. Um, or just average school supplies. You can, you can give school supplies that teachers have requested. Uh, but this was AP World History, local school. Uh-huh. And I got pictures back, and boy, did it remind me of my son's oh, high school God. classmates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, the the nerdy spectrum kids doing mm-hmm. AP World History was uh, well. That was uh, the our autism touching. basement club. Yeah, the autism basement club, <laughs> the spectrum basement that club that we used to have in our basement. Yeah, game. They were gaming in pizza every every Friday yeah. night. Every, and and yeah, really, literally every Friday night for like two years, we had we were the we were that house. The boys over. We were the that house. Stable yeah. environment, and all of them graduated high school. All of them graduated high um, school. All yeah. of them are are doing well than better than you would expect, given yes. kind of the fluid nature of their home life in some cases and yeah. so forth and well and and one of them's going to community college now yes. which is a big plus yay yay team uh-huh. uh our son's the only one going to four-year college right now but that's mm-hmm. that's sort of to be expected we're we're still rooting for all four of them to yeah. uh have great lives ahead and uh so yeah anyway it makes you feel good check it out does. donors choose uh check out other charities that you can help out and of course support your local podcast we do we so appreciate that we do i'm um, we're sorry we had to cancel our national tour um you know yeah, the, and the, coachella the, we're not co- going to coachella no, we're not we're not <laughs> we, we're not going to funks grove we might no. go to effingham but not funks effingham. Grove. that's that's our national <laughs> tour um and, there is and, a there is a there is a city in illinois called effingham by yes, the way and yeah. it's a joke because just just swear just you don't don't edge up to it if you're gonna say fucking just say fucking <laughs> effingham who's effingham we, we, we yeah. picture a lot of timid methodist um pioneers going i i don't want to say it but i want to say it you know what i mean and they named Let's their town that. effingham yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but there and one of the things that has come up now that we're sort of you know at the at the very beginning of a very long period of plague and unpleasantness and shutdowns and disruptions all of which are going to happen which is why we have to be very kind to each other is uh locally um uh we had the the president of the sangamon county board do a press conference yesterday everybody's doing a press conference the governor Mm -hmm. mayor of chicago our mayor had to be pressured to shut down the saint patrick's day parade well he's so timid he doesn't do anything that i'd rather not make any decisions at all chamber he's he's she should be head of the chamber of commerce i i like him personally but he's he's not he uh, should be somewhere counting money that's about all he's not a bold leader (laughs) no but but the um one of the questions that kept coming up well there were two questions one was so what happens if we if we do something and it's over 250 people and that's when that's when the smart press conference person, the uh, yeah. uh, the guy who uh, runs the county board, um, basically said, "What about what? What do you say, sheriff?" And the sheriff says, oh, "I'll come shut you down." Oh, okay. Good. Well, there you go. Good. But the other big question was, "Why aren't you shutting the schools down?" Yeah. And it's a very good question. And the answer is probably they will, but there's an enormous amount of logistics attached to schools, like what happens to working parents who can't afford to have kids at home because they're at work all right. day. What right. do you do about the many, many the 50, 60 percent of students who get their one meal a day guaranteed at school. What do you do about that? Um, there's a lot that well, goes in, in Illinois. It's two because yeah. uh, they get yeah, free breakfast right. as well. That's so, right. yeah. yeah. So, but, so how do you replace that? Um, and the one of the things you personally, people out there can do is you can give to your local food bank. 
You can make yeah. sure your local food, and they take cash. Let's give them, just give them money. I mean, cans are great. That's all felt well and good, but food banks need cash. Um, because there's going to be a large number of hungry kids who are going to be with nothing to do for at least a few weeks, yeah. um, looking for activities that are safe and not plague um, vectory and food, meals. And that is something you can do in your own community right now. That's that will lift the burden off of working parents who suddenly have to figure out how to draw a paycheck at the same time that they have to take care of kids they weren't planning on taking care of. Right, so right. plenty to do, plenty for everyone to do. Um, and of course, yes, support your local podcast because, um, you know, this is, there was, there was, a, there was a strange conversation that I was watching online on social media, but couldn't participate in because it was like, well, what, what about our advertisers? What happens to them when they shut down? What happens when they're the da, da, da? I'm like, okay, we have no advertisers. They're all mm -hmm. fake. So that's not really a problem for us. We don't have any national tour planned. Really not. That's not a problem for us. Our staff are basically three cats that sit in the window and look at birds all day. <laughs> so finding a way for them to work at home or telecommute is not really an they issue for us. They work at home anyway. <laughs> and it's not that we're making light of larger organizations no, that no, have yeah. real logistical problems and, and real cash flow problems now. It's that right. s w this is a weird moment where being kind of a mom and pa operation in a cornfield is working kind of for us. Uh -huh. So we're just uh -huh. going to keep coming back to you every week through this whole thing, talking to you about what's going on here and uh, letting you know what we think about stuff. For example, for example, I am looking forward to the debates this Sunday. You are? I am. Oh my gosh. I'm absolutely okay. looking forward to them. <laughs> Two people, no audience. Uh, it kind of feels like I got my wish, my bring back the League of Women Voters debate wish in the worst, oh, okay. <laughs> in the worst way possible. Like if you, if you ever saw um, on PBS, uh, The Lathe of Heaven, which is where... Um, our character has what are called effective dreams. Um, oh. Let's let's bring let's let's el let's eliminate the population problem. So he dreams of a plague that kills a quarter of the, of the earth. Oh lord! Uh, well, let's bring everyone together. So he dreams of an alien invasion that 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 <laughs> brings everyone together. So I really hope this COVID thing isn't on me. That my wish for a uh, two person calm debate moderated by normal people with no audience. It's like. Okay, here's how to ensure that a global pandemic. Uh -huh. Yeah, that'll yeah. do it. So yeah, I apologize. if that was me, yeah. I'm sorry. But I'm looking forward to the two uh, remaining viable candidates for the Democratic nomination. Actually, calmly discussing issues would yeah. be nice. And I hope it doesn't turn into personal attacks because yeah. that's going to really anger me. S sitting at a table, but... debating each other over issues. I, I, yeah. I would love for that to be true. And and the the who whoever rises to, I think they both will, frankly. But yeah. I want to see Democrats rise to meet the moment in the way that Trump is completely failing in every yeah. respect to be anything exactly. other well, than a walking And they already did. Both, both did. Bernie Sanders and, and uh, Joe Biden gave speeches on Thursday that yeah. were great. so cogent. They were great. <laughs> Just, clear. And right. for they a minute know, there, they was, understand we have oh. to, we have things we have to do and we're going to have to do them. So I remember, here's how government solves problems. I remember yeah. capable leadership. I, I, I vividly remember capable really? leadership. Really? Listening from, to both of them. Mm, I'm, mm. I swear. I, I listened to both of them. I'm like, oh, that's what it sounds like Yeah. to have somebody who understands that government has, you know, Legos that move and you yeah. have to, you have to kind of coordinate them so they're all pointing in the same direction toward a goal and then we make that goal we set that goal and we figure out how it works and then we reset the goal based on whether the results happen and it's just like oh this is so logical and so predictable and yep. and here's how we do these things and i was so grateful for katie porter this week oh god yeah who, you know yeah. pointing out there's existing law and existing authority for you to do x y and z why don't you just do it yes and she wouldn't let it go until he said yes yes and that's that is heroic of mm -hmm. her to do Gentlemen, that she is that yeah. is not how you ask for a date okay that, <laughs> no. no bad bad man bad <laughs> but if you have the head of an agency trying to weasel out of his, his or her responsibility in front of you under oath yeah, this is yeah. how you go in at them. You go in at them hard and you do not let up until they give you a straight answer. Either yes, which he did in this case, excellent. And then she says, okay, great. 
Everyone listen to that. Everyone in the country hear this. You can go. Please understand you will not be responsible for a $3,100 medical bill yes. if you if you think you are a carrier of this virus. Right. That's you get it. to go in and get this for free, period. Exactly. And exactly. That, and that is how government's supposed to work. It should, you, shouldn't have, you shouldn't have to pry you it out of their do, hands. You shouldn't have to do that. But, but understandable with this president, you know, he could be fired tomorrow for saying that to her. Yeah. And he doesn't know. Yeah. Uh, and and what's going on in our house is um, Junior Dude is still at college. Yes, he his spring breaks was supposed to start next Saturday, but it's starting this Saturday, and they're yeah. going to have a two week spring break uh, at Augustana College, and then uh, they'll decide. He is supposed to bring home with him all of his schoolwork, his computer, and any materials he might need if they go to online classes. Uh, he is not supposed to pack up his dorm room and take everything home. Right. So that's that's sort of how right. they're handling it. Um, so I'm gearing up for a laundry day. Basically. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Drift Glass. Yeah. He does, Drift Glass does the laundry. I'm not real good on stairs. Um, yeah. And the laundry's in the basement. So he got he got that job. Yeah. Uh, we do. We divide up things sort of. You you do. do handle an awful lot of the housework. I so well, appreciate that. Well, but it's it's kind of funny because I I see I can plan for a sudden exponential increase in stuff in our house. <laughs> I can see it coming. I've got months, weeks notice. I know what's coming. Okay, yes, that's right. and plenty of that. Right? Yeah, yeah, got, I'm good. I'm totally good. I'm ready. Bring it on. Um, yes. It it doesn't require you know you don't have to be well, a rock. I and mean, in particular youngest child has this habit of hoarding dirty clothes yes. and all of a sudden deciding it's too much and bringing it all down at once and so by, you'll have by all notice. cut up with the laundry and oh there's 30 pounds of underwear in the laundry basket the laundry fairy that has happen? come that's great <laughs> um uh, the girl goes through more costume changes than share well um, she's but, she's 16 but so, here's the thing this know, is the thing yeah and i'm sure this is true of most of you in your household you plan for shit yeah. Right. You know, oh, this right. is coming and this is going to happen. So we're going to do this now to get ready for that later. That right. basic understanding of linear time and right. causality is something that Republicans are incapable of doing. They just can't do it. They won't do it. And so Donald Trump this week, we learned, um, has been keeping the numbers artificially low yeah. or, or tried to for reasons uh, that involve his his reelection. He didn't want to look bad, so he's been lying and lying and getting people killed. Him and Fox News are going to cost people lives. Absolutely, absolutely. And that is that is a capital offense. That is fucking treason. And 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 Rupert Murdoch and Fox News are standing right behind him, putting lunatics on the air, spreading the m most dangerous kind of conspiracies, the kind that actually cause this plague to spread further and faster. Well, and, with the he with a healthy, unhealthy dose of racism yes. mixed in. Oh yeah, you know this is an Asian invasion. This is, you know, w uh, a war virus being unleashed on Donald Trump personally, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And so, Jerry Falwell Jr. was on this morning yes. doing the same thing. Nick North Cersei's Korea. on Twitter doing it was the same Korean thing. North Korean virus weaponized. Right. It was the weaponized. So yeah. Boys and girls, the death panels have finally arrived, and surprise, surprise, it's the Republican Party. It's the Republican Party. Um, what else do we have to talk about, Driftglass? Well, it's it's been a weird week of of plague related news, and don't don't listen to any podcast or anyone like us who records anything to get up to the minute anything because an hour from right. now everything could change. We're recording this on Friday. We do try to do it the last possible minute every week so that right. we're most current. But, and we're doing it before Donald Trump's Rose Garden, yeah. whatever that Actually, he's going to do this looking afternoon. Looking over my shoulder, literally during it. So, oh, okay. Who knows? Well, uh, I'm not watching. So, <laughs> I, I do. I did watch uh, portions of the uh, national address, uh, which featured uh, a drugged up Donald Trump, uh, doped to the eyeballs, propped in front of a camera. If you've ever seen Patterns of Force Star Trek episode with John Gill as as the Fuhrer. The it's that he's that guy. I've got to go watch that one again because that it doesn't come spring to mind immediately. Can well, you... it's, it's one of those it's one of those ones where, oh, we landed on a planet and it's Nazi Germany. And oh, how the hell did that happen? These were just two planets that didn't like each other. Now, one planet is literally has swastikas and, and SS and every all the trappings of, of fascism. And they're about to attack the other planet. And the Fuhrer is like a history teacher. Named John Gill, 
who came and, and thought he could do the, the fascism thing without the Nazi part. Uh, you know, he could, he could do, he could, Germany was beaten and destroyed and he thought he could get this planet that was beaten on, on its knees back up and running without all the nastiness. And of course hmm. you can't, uh, but yeah. John Gill is doped out of his mind and propped up in front of a camera or a radio microphone and gives this address. And there's this long interaction because Kirk knew him back at the Academy. He's like, Oh my God, what's wrong with him? Is he drugged? Is he comatose? The, nothing he says makes any sense. These are just random strings of words he's saying. Nothing. Ma- There's no logic to it. Like, yep, that was Donald Trump. Just bug-eyed, sniffling, clearly barely literate, squinting at this shit, unable to read it, didn't want to be there, didn't want to say this stuff, scared out of his mind, and just... And you can watch in real time as the stock market just threw itself off a cliff as he was talking. Mm-hmm. It was a yeah. direct one-to-one relation to this monster opening his fucking mouth and out pours Stephen Miller's racist bile. Exactly. And, and a bunch We're of lies. build a wall to prevent us from the coronavirus with Europe. And, and a bunch but of lies. And, and, not anywhere where my golf courses are. Right. right? And, <laughs> and, and lies and, and uh, by omission and commission that the White House itself had to walk back an hour later oh no see what i meant to say was this other thing and no i do it and it's like dude he was this ad-libbing is, yes this is, this is no he wasn't that's the problem this well, was he a did ad-lib during the speech yeah. apparently he did yes but this and, was a this was a scripted this was john kennedy talking to the nation about the cuban missile crisis this is serious shit this is behind the resolute desk in the office reading from a script that presumably has been vetted to death because millions of people are going to watch this and take you deadly serious, even if they think you're a joke. And it turns right. out your presentation was drug addled. You, you looked terrifying. You couldn't fucking read and you lied and you right. lied and you racist asshole. You use this moment to be your worst possible self. And that is what scared the hell out of people. It wasn't that great. We have a virus and it's pretty bad. It's going to get worse. It was that the, Oh my God, the leader of our country is, is every bit as fucking awful and cannot control himself and cannot tell the truth. Put a nuke to his head. He cannot fucking tell the truth for five minutes at a stretch. This guy's in charge. Holy shit. And all the agencies that we depend on that you shouldn't have to think about. I shouldn't have to think about the CDC. I really shouldn't. Right. No. But you should, oh, that, you find they should out, just oh, do their job. Right. Well, so how's, right. Well, we hollowed that out. We hollowed that out. We got rid of those people and we're using the new Medicaid director to make sure Medicaid isn't used to combat this. And you were not yeah. going to allow Cal and it, just everything you could do, not just to fuck it up, but to actively sabotage your own country because you're a vain, petty thug who can't stand the thought of people not applauding him and cheering for him. Every, every speech by every cabinet member has been, be, begins and ends now with praise for the dear, dear leader. leader. Yep. And, yep. And, 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 and there are some people who will not go on television, but go on a radio podcast type thing to tell the truth, because if they go on television, Trump will see it. He'll scream at it and he'll fire them. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and as a separate, but not separate component of this Fox news, as you mentioned uh, with Jerry Falwell Jr. and the yeah. rest of them, is on some kind of weird mission to make sure as many of its viewers get as sick as possible and die right. as soon as possible. Right. It, that's no. the only explanation I have. And by the way, in completely unrelated news, uh, Fox has announced it's opening its new Soylent Green Snack Crack Factory <laughs> in Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin. So just neither here nor there. Uh, but, you know, they're going to they're, they're, they're moving a lot of but their business over there. folks. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They are. The disinformation is is constant, mm-hmm. and I have been grateful to see on CNN and MSNBC in the past forty eight hours uh-huh. a switch. There, uh, some switch has gone off, where both of them at the same time had a Q and A, where people could call in or write in and yeah. say, you know, here's here's what I want to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I go to this family dinner? Can I do the? You know, these kind of questions are really important, and. When you re- when someone upstairs in those two networks realized we're not going to get any accurate information from the White House no. or from the CDC or no. from anybody, we have to start having experts on and we have to start calming the waters of the American public because that's our job. And, and that's and, and yeah. that, what you just said there. Yep. All it took was the threat of an apocalypse 
to yeah. finally force the news media to the, do its the job, to do its media fucking to, job, to, to decide that we're going to talk about truth and not just cover lies as mm. another opinion, an alternative fact, or right. it was reported, or he did say that it is inaccurate. And no, we can't do that in this case. Donald and, Trump disputes that the, the sky is blue. Right? Who really right. knows? Who and, really knows? Yeah. 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 Well, and let's let's hope this this uh, you know there have been uh, delays in primaries in uh, Louisiana, uh, Louisiana, and Georgia. Uh -huh. um, now, the Georgia is not a presidential primary; it's a judge election, I believe. But they've also delayed the mayoral elections in Great Britain for a year mm -hmm. over this. Uh, let's hope we move to voting by mail universally across the country and that's it. Well, somehow, somehow we managed a presidential election during the middle of the American civil war. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, there, the well, technology that only, exists. That was only white men voting. Yeah, well, so, you know, there is uh, that. The technology exists to make it possible for people to vote in a way that doesn't involve walking into a small cramped space full of yep. sweaty people. There right. is there is stuff. I'm I'm sure once they get those Jeff telegraph Glass, lines. I'm serious. I'm yeah. serious, Jeff Glass. If we went back to only white men can vote, the Republican Party would have no problem with voter suppression. Oh, they no. just stop it. No, it would be easy because they'd win. So forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking as so, a white male, I just you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'd like to apologize. Um, uh, and and here's the thing: at state and local governments, you know, the the governor of our state had a very thoroughgoing press conference right. just a couple days ago, I think. The mayor of the city of Chicago had a very thoroughgoing press conference. As we said, Sangamon County, the county where we live, had a had a very – it was funny because they were streaming it live. So it was supposed to start at 4. It didn't start until like 4.30. So you had a bunch of people sitting in a meeting room just sort of bullshitting. And then one of them realized, oh, my God, the camera's on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because they, yeah. Oh, no, everything's fine. We're not all going to die or anything. Remember right, what I just said right. about that? But it was, it, was, it was like even at that level, even at the county level. It was conducted well, and, professionally. You know, John, and John Oliver had this thing on last Sunday about sheriffs. Yeah. And electing your sheriff and make sure you don't elect a total racist to make yeah. sure you, you know, you know who your sheriff is because they have a lot of power that you might not be aware of. And they, the county is in charge of the public health for Sangamon yeah. County. That's who runs the public health center is the county, Sangamon mm -hmm. County. So uh, the sheriff saying, look, if you decide to hold a thing where there's 300 people in a auditorium, the sheriff's going to come in with the fire department and the police department and helping out yeah. and shut it down. Yeah. yeah. And, but so they had, they had the, that's just competence. They had the public health, you know, uh, public health people. They had doctors. They had cops. Yeah. They, had, but they had all the people you need the to have. public health people are county employees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, again, let, let us remind you all that we are now in the 40th year of the Reagan anti-government revolution. So yes, how do you right. like it so far? Yeah. Um, and I did want to mention, if you want a short lesson in how a disease vector works in the real mm -hmm. world, just yeah. watch how quickly every fucking wingnut in Christendom simultaneously glommed on to the debunked, but what about Obama and swine flu, huh? 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 I've heard that more times in the last two days than I've, I've heard it ever. And it was based on a Facebook post that has been debunked over and over and over again. But I heard Donald Trump repeating it over and over again. Half the shitheads on Facebook. It's all over Twitter because those are the meat that that's where this that's where this Petri dish is, where these things get stirred up. But it went from nobody remembered anything about it to, oh, yeah, we can blame the black guy for being even worse than we are. Right. Let's right. That up. And that went and that went viral, literally viral, like overnight. That's how brain disease spreads in the Republican Party. And it doesn't matter once once the the beast is out of the barn, it doesn't matter how many times you debunk it, how many times you kicked it. Because remember, you can never admit you're wrong. You can never admit that the thing that I just said to, to own the libs is completely fucking wrong. So I need to change the subject or mute you or something or tell the next lie, which is why the Trump presidency is not over. Because yes, the right. cause of it is not over. The cause, the disease itself, the Republican Party is the disease. Donald Trump is a presenting symptom of that disease. The next time around, it'll be fucking Tom Cotton. It'll be 10 Tom times. Tom Cotton, and you've, you've called it. You absolutely called yeah. it. Because Tom Cotton's getting ready. And Tom they're Cotton figuring day. out at Fox News how to rebrand this shit pile of a political party. Yeah. 
so that people can keep watching their stupid shit. And mark my words, um, Bill Crystal will find nice things to say about Tom Cotton. Absolutely. And David Frum will write pay-ins to Tom Cotton. And David Brooks has already said. David Brooks, absolutely. Back in 2014, the Republican Party is, don't worry, it's, we're over our Sarah Palin stuff. Now we're on to the normal Tom Cotton Republican Party. Right, Tom Cotton, intellectual. There mm -hmm. you go. Yeah, um, he's a traitor. He, he signed the 44 signature letter to Iran saying, don't make a deal with Barack Obama because we're going to undo it. Now you undo the foreign policy of a sitting president. Go figure. You wanted to talk a little bit about the Medicare for all, the fiscal argument versus the moral argument. Is that right? Right. Well, a couple things. Um, first of all, Susan Collins, we see you. We see you, Susan uh, Collins. That's the other thing I did was give $2 each to two Senate candidates. I did not give to Susan Collins' um, opponent this time. I have given to her before, but uh, I did give to Jamie Harrison and I did give to Amy McGrath this week, $2, because that's what I could afford. Uh, it's it's uh, another way you can make a difference. Um, get Mitch McConnell out of the Senate, please. Please. All of these Republicans have got to go. They have allowed this to happen. What is happening this week, they have allowed to happen. They had an opportunity and they blew it. And uh, they, as someone on Twitter said, they need to go with prejudice. We need to kick them out with prejudice. Uh -huh. uh, but I have been thinking a lot about Medicare for all this week. It's, it is the, the one thing that's sort of boiling in the Democratic Party, although, you know, Bernie has come such a long way with this issue, uh, for which I'm very grateful. And uh, I had asked a question on Twitter about M4A because I've read the bill and, you know, the bill I've said many times on this podcast, the bill phases in Medicare for all over four to five years yeah. and uh, it doesn't happen now. No. It's not an immediate fix. The, bi the bill, as Bernie Sanders introduced it, uh, is a phase in. And so I had a couple of concerns about it. Uh, one is looking at the perpetual underfunding of British healthcare, the, the national health service in Britain and seeing how perpetually underfunded it is and uh, concern that that might happen here. And also I have a, a real concern about how corporations contribute to the cost of this. Because if you just put a tax on corporations to cover M4A, they're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have a lot of confidence in the power of corporations to engage in tax avoidance. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked about this on Twitter, and I was so grateful someone got back to me and said, well, you got to remember that uh, the National Health Service in Britain is actually nationalized health care. In other words, the government owns the hospitals. The government yes. owns yeah. the, the medical <laughs> facilities. That what we're talking about here with Medicare for All is actually insurance and having a nationalization of insurance, not a nationalization of the healthcare the, industry. The means of production, uh, right? The yeah. means of production. So it's a different situation. Mm -hmm. And so that was that was interesting to talk to talk to people about or get that piece of information that I hadn't thought about. And then as I've been thinking about it um, in terms of uh, Joe Biden's response to uh, you know how do we pay for it and so forth. His his response has been, you know, we don't we don't need to go this fully expensive proposition. There are ways to get there without doing that. Um, it occurred to me if I was working for Joe Biden, which is never going to happen, uh, <laughs> that that he really needs to snap out of this cost thing. First of all, the Fed just tossed one point five trillion dollars at Wall Street yesterday, and yeah. everyone said, you know, how are you going to pay for it is out the window. Yeah, no because, more, no more. Uh, -uh. well, now and you, that that yeah. depends. That really does depend on how. Uh, Katie Porter, the Democratic Party chooses to be uh, yes, in, in right. 2021, 2022. Right. I mean, this is going to be the minute a Democrat gets in the White House, whoever it may be, mm -hmm. uh, and starts saying, nope, we're going to do some shit. We're going to pay for some shit. We're going to start doing other things. And and Chuck Todd, you know, loses what's left of his hair right. and, and runs right. around with his shorts on fire, screaming about, how are you going to pay for it? How are you going to pay for it? I thought we what had a deficit. deficit. What about, what the, about deficit? the deficit? Yes. Right. And at that moment, that's, that's the moment. That's your opportunity to say, when fuck you, you. When you <laughs> run at him with a sword in both hands and right. kill him uh, verbally. 
verbally, um, yes. You have to you have to marshal your people and put them on the Sunday shows and put them in mm-hmm. the op-ed pages yes, saying right. anyone who sat on their asses in the last four years and let this when Mexico lunatic was pay for the wall. And right. let this lunatic just do whatever they wanted, and you just shrug your shoulders and think, what, what are you gonna do? That's just Trump. And his voters will come to our homes and poop in our ears if we if we take him on. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to normalize everything. We're going to say it's both sides. We're going to keep playing this stupid fucking game. Every one of you who did that for the last four years, you have had- you, shut up. <laughs> your, your White House, we're going to start doing press conferences. Your press ca- pass is now canceled. Right. You're not a journalist. You're a fucking stooge. And we're not putting stooges in these seats anymore. I right. will answer any reasonable question, but any question about pay-fors, you need to shut up for the next eight years. Yep. And then I will answer all your questions. But I'm not answering a goddamn word about how anything's going to get paid for because. My answer pro- is Mexico is going to pay for it. And right. you're going to take that and eat it right. the way you ate it for Trump. And every and one smile. of my people is going to give you right. the same goddamn answer. And right. Maggie Haberman, you can call him up at two in the morning and hope to leak something. Everyone in my staff has been instructed that any reporter asks how anything's going to get paid for from bike lanes on the white house lawn to medicare for all the answer is mexico, mexico. will pay for it <laughs> yes right good. right good now shut up next question right. who's gonna pay for climate change okay mexico. Sergeant of the arms take it take his <laughs> ass out, out of here yep um, i want his, i want him out of here yep miss ty and- it really is if we can muster the the guts to treat the media as brutally as the right treats the as media Donald every Trump day did. yes as, as right because look I would like a stand-up, aggressive, um, um, fact-driven, passionate journalism at the heart of my country. I would love that. Right. We don't have that. And I don't mind that. being challenged. I don't mind if the policies are challenged, but they're no. not going to be challenged with, well, how are you going to pay for it? Deficit, deficit, when you didn't give a shit about that. Right. And when it's, so, whenever it's a Republican enough, whenever it's an endless war, right. whenever it's the banks, whenever it's anything that ha- that will line the pockets of your bosses upstairs, you're happy to let it go. And so enough. what, as a, the New York Times, the Washington Post, NBC, ABC, CBS, all the major media has taught us, has taught us, if we just are willing to learn the lesson, they yeah. will bend in the direction of, who, of whoever beats them hardest. Exactly. So exactly. our they job- They are lap dogs to power and they will they will do it. Yep. So our job is to make them more miserable <laughs> and more terrified professionally than the right. That's our right. job because that's the only thing they respond to. So let's, yeah. since we are on the side of the angels- Let's use that knowledge to our advantage and force yep. them to be better people by f- yep. reporting on the facts. Yep. And the way you do yep. that is day one, you start stomping on them. Yep. And you don't stop until they say, I give, I give. You're right. Yeah. I was because at- we're going to be ready for the next pandemic. Fuck you. Next right. question. Yes. Yep. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did. My, my advice to Joe Biden is to understand one, the argument that Joe Biden has made from the beginning of his campaign is that we need to return to a moral presidency. Right. And he has that mantle that he's putting on to mm-hmm. say, you know, we need to get back to good good man in government. That's the point. Yes. Yeah, I'm a good I'm a good man. That's his you, argument. And you listener may mm-hmm. hate Joe Biden for all I know. Right. But right. that is the argument no. he and his campaign are making. Right. And and I could argue in the opposite direction Right. If I chose to do so, that's not my point. So this I'm going to move campaign on. Strat- <laughs> this is about campaign strategy. This is about strategy. campaign strategy. Right. Um, but Joe Biden is making a mistake if he's going to do that and then take the question of Medicare for all and make it a fiscal argument rather right. than a moral that's argument. Exactly because right. Medicare for all is a moral argument, period. And the reason that so many people in the Democratic Party it polls, you know, 70, 80 percent, whatever yeah. Yeah. in the Democratic Party is it is not a fiscal argument. It's a, it is a moral argument. And so if I were Joe Biden, I would be on Sunday night adopting the language that Bernie Sanders adopts as well and mm-hmm. agreeing with Bernie Sanders as much as possible Sunday night to say, yes, we have a moral obligation to understand that health care is a human right. And it's a question of how we get there. I also think he bungled a little bit the answer from Lawrence O'Donnell about, yes. you know, would you veto it, right. which is not a, 
all he needed to say was, if it's good enough for Nancy Pelosi and a Democratic Senate, it's good enough right. for me. I'll sign any health care right. bill they put in front of me. Or, or if you're end of story, if you're more verbose like me. Yeah. I would have answered, I would love to live in the alternate universe where that actually happens, Lawrence. That'd be great. <laughs> but that is, I don't know what you're smoking, but pass them over to me. Yeah, um, right. But I live in this universe where Mitch McConnell is in charge of the Senate. Yeah, but I don't like introducing the concept of failure in no, a no, campaign because I, I think that's the I problem. Agree. We need to have hope and change and so forth. That's what wins elections. So say – Whatever is good enough, again, whatever is good mm -hmm. enough for Nancy Pelosi, the squad, right. and the Democrat and a Democratic Senate sure. to put on my desk regarding health care, I will sign. I and will I'm having to work with them to make that bill the best it can be. Uh -huh. And if Bernie wants to put his bill up against the, all of the other ideas that the Democratic Party will have mm -hmm. on health care, once we have those three branches of government, mm -hmm. let's go for it. Yeah. But but he does need to start with the moral argument of yes, Bernie, healthcare is a human right, and Period. we need to get there yeah. as quickly as we can, and and then point out your bill takes five, four to five years to get there. Okay, let's see, let's see, and and maybe as you and I have discussed, let's talk about the Warren plan. Yeah, <laughs> everything exactly. should be the Warren yeah. plan, right? This is like the Marshall plan. Like We're going to do plan. as Take... much as we can mm -hmm. on day one. We're going to do as much as we can on month by month three. We're going to do as much as we can by the six months with the understanding that we may only have 15 months to get anything done because right. in the midterms, we may lose the house. Who knows? Uh, you know, we did in 2010. We lost we lost the house over health care. Uh, hopefully the tide has turned and people realize who wants health care for everybody and who doesn't. Yeah. But uh, I don't put it past Fox News to terrify the shit out of everybody right? with socialism, 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 you know. Well, and, 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 uh, and let's I mean, if they could have a debate over just this one topic without the pay yeah. fors I mean, the pay fors are important, right. but the moral argument is, look, we're both up here arguing that that everyone should have health care. We're, di right. we're disagreeing over the means to get there and the efficacy and and what you trade off. If you if you swing for the fences and don't defend what you already have. And you and you don't hit it out of the park, then you lose everything. That's what that's what scares me. Right now, the Trump administration, while we're in the middle of a pandemic, is arguing to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. Yeah, They're in court right, right, right now trying to right. get rid of your health insurance, trying right. to turn the clock back on a, a system that's shitty at best. Well, so, and I think we all learned something from the Obamacare debacle, quote unquote, mm -hmm. which is what Elizabeth Warren said: you have to. Give people something immediately. Yes. You have to, you cannot wait two years to implement something because that is the vacuum through which lies fall. So for instance, if we had to do it all over again, 2020 hindsight, we definitely would have uh, given 26 year olds access to their parents' insurance on day one, day one right? Day one. That's right. What, those kind of things where you actually give people an immediate buy-in to your program and give them a little hope and a little chance to say oh wait this is a good thing maybe we'll keep this you know uh that that works well i, I think uh, they were i think they were planning on that I, I will just tell my my story once again for the people who haven't ever heard it before the obama administration uh before they were the obama administration they were doing citizen um uh discussion groups mm -hmm. uh platform groups and i went to the one on energy it was in Evanston, but the guy who ran it was was a doctor who helped Obama and Kennedy work on the health care plan. Yeah. And he yeah. was like, oh, don't worry. Yeah. Health care. It's, 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 a, it's a turnkey operation. We have all the details worked out. Everything's cool. Uh, Kennedy and, and uh, Obama and, and, and a bunch of experts have worked out how They're this is going to work. all on agreement. Boom. Right. There's an First, agreement. Right. We, we've got, the, we've got the, uh, the medical community on board. We have all the people who, who kneecapped um, Hillary care and Clinton care. Um, we've got them all sort of like on board. So this is going to fly through. Don't worry about it. And then we can move on to the next item. The next, that's really how they thought this was going to happen. We're going to go wow. in. Everyone agrees healthcare is broken. Everyone agrees it needs to be fixed. We're going to give Republicans 70% of what they want anyway. And we're all going to agree. We're going to get a big win on the board. We're going to move forward. They never anticipated that their own party, that Joe Lieberman would knife him in the fucking right, back. Right. They never anticipated that every single Republican would absolutely refuse to do anything, would rather see Americans die in right. large numbers than lift a fucking finger to help the well, black guy Well, they didn't pass. anticipate the Tea Party either. They no. didn't anticipate that there would be a well-financed group of Glenn Beck fans. Right. 
who were going to upend and and then a totally complicit mainstream media that saw this shiny thing called the Tea Party and pretended that it wasn't Republican voters. Well, and this is really what haunts our memory. It's not that uh-huh. we, we, you and I, do not want Medicare for all. It's that we right. know exactly how absolutely ruthless Republicans are when it absolutely. comes to destroying yeah. everything you love and are willing to and kill how much Americans. Money they, they're willing, how much they're willing to spend yeah. to lie to to sell lies yeah yeah so i'm All not right, we got to get we got to move on you know we're there's we're, news we're at 55 minutes holy shit <laughs> um yeah let, look, let, i'm gonna have you read the news roundup from beginning to end really yeah oh, gosh. and then i'll do the outro all right all right well, let's, let's do corona stuff um yeah. today uh trump continues to double down on his debunked bullshit that somehow obama's to blame for everything uh according to politico donald trump's new european travel restrictions have a very convenient side effect. They exempt nations where three Trump-owned golf courses are located. Um, an ally of Mitch McConnell says the Senate will not take up the House's coronavirus bill until after the recess. They'll act when they come back. This is just gross negligence. This is criminal negligence on the part of Mitch McConnell. And and let me say that they have been shamed into doing it after a three-day recess instead of the three-day recess plus a 10-day recess. Right. Uh, but three days when the level of infection reported is doubling every day is is un, just unbelievable. Yep. Um, the Trump administration is blocking states from using Medicaid to expand medical services as part of their response to the pandemic. Uh, the U.S., by the way, did not coordinate or notify the European Union before Trump announced the travel restrictions. And American citizens paid $20,000 to get home by Friday. Yeah. And then we're told, oh, no, never mind. We didn't Never mind. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. Uh Donald Trump attacked Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi just hours after calling on lawmakers to put politics aside and stop the partisanship because, you know, he's a he's a pathological liar. Uh, the S&P 500 and the Dow both had their worst day since 1987. Uh, they also Nasdaq and the S&P 500 joined the Dow in the bear market territory, a decline of 20 uh, percent. Trading halted twice. Uh, that automatic trigger that stops market trading has happened three times in the last quarter century, twice or in the last week. That's how bad things have gotten. Um, Since mid-January, the White House has ordered all meetings discussing the uh, coronavirus to be classified. The move restricts staffers, federal health officials, and government experts without security clearance from participating in discussions. They wanted to keep this secret, like, you know, Ukraine was secret, because it was embarrassing. So let's not talk about it, and maybe it'll go away. The way they temporarily solved the problem of a Wall Street crash, we mentioned, was by conjuring $1.5 trillion out of thin air and handing it over to Wall Street, which is great. That's cool. If they can do that, they can certainly pay for Medicare for all. Um, All Broadway theaters in New York are closed. Uh, France has closed all schools and universities. Disneyland is closed until the end of the month, and the NHL has suspended its season. There's a million other things that are being closed. Um, this is not by any means a comprehensive list. It's just to give you an idea that this is global. It's serious and you should take it seriously. I'm sure you are because you're listening to this podcast. So you're a serious person. That's right. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Banshee. (laughs) Banshee is a beautiful kitty. We just love him. His owner wants us to know that he sings the freshly poured jingle even when he's pouring his own coffee. And I had never thought of that. Yeah. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured coffee. What a great idea. Damn. Uh, you know, we're, we might expand the freshly poured world into well, getting, freshly, poured, freshly poured coffee would be great. We're getting people on Twitter saying, oh, yeah, I sing that all the time. And my daughter I looks I sing at that like, all the time to my cat. My daughter's That's like, so what's funny. wrong with you? Like, oh, my God. We, we've done something <laughs> awful, Lou Guy. I have a really bad feeling that that we'll go down in history that's it that'll be what that's we it. We're, people are going to remember that decades from now remember yeah. that freshly poured podcast it was great it's about cats and about <laughs> cat food is wonderful <laughs> and uh banshee's owner also wanted us to know we hate to say we are podcast deadbeats we would love to donate every month but we live on wind pudding and air sauce mm-hmm. what <laughs> We totally understand that. Hey, ketchup packets uh, and hot water. Why, right? why do they call it a fixed income when it is always broken? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great yeah. line. Well, we feel you. We feel you we for sure. We feel you. We understand. Uh, but we're so grateful that you sent us Banshee. He's a beautiful kitty. And he will be at our Facebook page and website this week. Uh, we so appreciate you. Thank you very much. 
Freshly poured cat food is our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat or dog or other animal will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the only food they eat is freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. Freshly poured cat food available in box, bag, or can. It won't be ignored if it's freshly poured. And you can visit Banshee at our Facebook page and website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that you can write us at any of our addresses, but we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise they will be delivering mail through the coronavirus yes they will so we are certainly in love with them neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor yeah, dark of night. or coronavirus yeah don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline if you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself and we mean that if you can afford it if you go if you have bought a latte in the past month please buy one for us this is not charity this is our job and a labor of love Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, both our PayPal and postal address information, as well as merch. It is time to get your Both Sides Don't Bumper sticker, folks. Uh, it's all there it at proleftpod.com. It's, it's all there. And uh, our wonderful angel nerd, Tammy, has uh, rallied and gotten all of our podcasts up on YouTube. We're, we're caught she's up. A, she's amazing. She's just she's amazing. amazing. Yep. And she, you know, she had to move. She did all kinds of stuff and she's had a life and so forth. And uh, in spite of everything, she uh, came back and got everything caught up for us. And uh, we love her. Thank you so much, Tammy. Mm -hmm. And please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, now that March Madness is canceled, the Internet Kitties are looking forward to a month of exciting curling and caber tossing action on sports TV. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.